We're here at CES 2016, and I'm joined by Wilfred van Baalen, founder of Aura Technologies, to talk about their plans for 2016. So before we start talking about 2016, what were the big achievements in 2015? I think there were many ones. On the content side, we have big achievements done, and as well in the implementation of the technology. Yeah? So we see in every kind of uh, sector, market, we see our technology impor importing. Yeah? Not all the products are yet on the market, so in 2016, many more products will come on the market. Um, that's one thing, and you see as well in content, uh, as well in movies, you've seen as well the first movies coming out now, but as well music, a lot of music, and that has some reasons. Yeah. Um, I think the Auto 3D format is the only choice in the market where you can do music like the workflow we are used to do for immersive sound. So we do, we can record the 3D space and reproduce it, we can mix it, and we can do as well the mastering process. That's something that other immersive, uh, let's say, uh, formats cannot do. So we are the only one who can reproduce the, uh, let's say, do the full mastering process, which is a crucial process as well in the workflow from pop music. Well, for you mentioned products, um, do you mean just AVRs? Oh, no, 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 not at all. Just AVRs is a small part. In fact, the biggest part is in fact our uh, technology for, um, let's say, the decoders, as well as Aromatic. I think that's what our two leading technologies we have. Yeah, Aromatic is known as yeah, our system as the most natural upmixing uh, algorithm there is on the market. Yeah, and secondly, of course, our uh, encoder decoder is still unique. It is the only concept where you can bring in the PCM in the uncompressed domain where you can bring more channels together without influencing the quality. Yeah, so that allows as well to bring, mm, let's say, 13.1 channels or like 11.1 channels in 5.1 without any extra bandwidth and we keep high resolution audio in each channel encoded and decoded yeah so that has a lot of power about compatibility in the market we have only one file delivery format uh, so that's that has many advantages and people start to see that now not only about the experience but as well the power of this technology Oro has been uh, channel-based up until now, but I have heard that you've been looking at doing object-based audio as well. Is that true? Um, let me put it like that. The moment when we came to the market, I made clear to the world, I think, the vision behind is we first expand with the existing workflows 3D audio. So our vision is we first expand it in a channel-based workflow, and then we add objects. So that means the moment when we came to the market in 2010, and in 2011, when we have seen our, our, let's say, our plugins to create it, those plugins were already prepared to add afterwards object-based technology. All the XYZ coordinates were in it, yeah? So everything was already there, yeah? So, uh, and it was always the vision, it makes sense to do it if you have at least, let's say, like 20 discrete amplified channels. But that's a point, and not, let's say, for the home consumer, was going to install more than 20 discrete channels. So that's that's not giving immediately, let's say, added value. Yeah? And that's, re that's the reason why I said as an efficient program, we believe that there was always, let's say, our goal, quality and efficiency. We try to make in the most efficient way the best quality. And that's what Auto3D does. So I think that's uh, that's what we achieved. And OK, we the Auto, the Auto Max is our object-based format. Yeah? But that was, in fact, our vision was as well about we should not make from an object-based format a propriety format. That's like PCM. PCM is, let's say, a channel-based delivery format. Everybody can use it. It's like free of rights. Yeah? It's an open format. Yeah? Same should be done as well for object-based. That's what in our belief was, our vision was. So that's the reason why we are still working together with our partner, Barco, with SMPTE together, to work there to a common format, let's say an, an, an open standard bitstream, and we are already two years working now on that. There is some evolution in it. Yeah, the moment when that bitstream comes out, yeah, then we have a common delivery format. Yeah, of course the speaker layout and the, this, this every company will have their own view on the speaker layout and 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 let's say the end-to-end -end solution they bring, but at least we have then a common bitstream, and that's the that's the moment we are waiting for now. The moment that that bitstream is defined we can come as well with this format, first of all, to the professional market, because there you have the speakers and you have so many speakers installed in cinema theaters, and perhaps as well for the high-end home cinema theaters, where people install 20, 25 speakers, yeah? But let's say for average homes, that's a question mark, what's the added value about it? I'm not going to say we don't do it, but the question is then, does it really make sense? 
You mentioned speaker layout. Um, yeah. There are obviously two other competing immersive formats, there's Dolby Atmos and TTSX. Yes. Um, Dolby Atmos has been using a 7.1.4 configuration primarily, are there other alternatives? And it looks as though DTSX is going to be implemented in a similar fashion, mm -hmm. whereas you use a slightly different configuration. Um, so how do you feel that would be compatible to consumers? Yeah, in fact, the, the difference is ma mainly where you place the speakers in the height, uh, let's say in the vertical axis. Yeah, The format 7.1 plus 4 was already launched by us many years ago. It, I'm happy to see that others are already taking that advantage as well. Yeah, But let's say Auro 11.1, we have two versions from it. The three-layered version, so 5.1, 5 and 1, which is in fact... Uh, a very efficient three-layer system and the fact that you have three layers has a lot of advantage because you have a more, let's say you have more resolution in the vertical axis. Yeah? And that's in fact key to immersive sound. The key to immersive sound is in fact the angle between the lower and the height layer. If that angle becomes a little bit too big, yeah, then our brain is perceiving that as two different sound sources. You know, we can have a an, an horizontal plane of 60 degrees that's let's say an, an, an vertical, uh, that's an, a normal stereo field, a horizontal stereo field. If you do 60 degrees in the vertical axis, that doesn't work for our brain. We don't have an ear here on the top of our head to, let's say, to, to, to take, let's say, the vertical time differences. So you cannot make phantom sources in the vertical axis. So we did hundreds of tests already 10 years ago and we felt that around 30 degrees, that's the maximum. So then you can keep a coherence between the time relationship so and that makes our our format so special and so much more natural sounding, and that's what people feel. Even if you if you don't know all this stuff, you immediately feel the feedback. They say, "Oh, that sounds so much more natural, so much more normal sound colors and things like that. So much more precision as well of the objects that you hear around." Yeah, and I think there the speaker layout is a very important thing. Another thing is as well that we have an, a scalability in our speaker layout, but which is very compatible with the content. And that is a huge advantage for the content makers. Because the content makers, they know if I mix an Auro, it will be everywhere sounding as I intended it. That's, let's say, with our competitors, they have more variables in the, in, in the way that you, uh, you implement the speakers in the ceiling, or two speakers, or four. Yeah, that's not giving, let's say, the guarantee that you have the same experience, yeah. So that's another advantage as well from our format, yeah. If someone already has an Atmos configuration with speakers overhead, yes. um, how can they uh, use that configuration with an Auro 3D soundtrack? Yeah, I tell you what, um, it would have been better the other way around. And there are a lot of people, they already test both, yeah? So they have the speaker layout from Dolby, they have the speaker layout from Auro, and they play back Auro content over an Atmos speaker layout. And then you feel, because our height layer is not so high, and then if you, let's say, if you suddenly have those reflections of those sounds suddenly really above you, it gives really like sometimes a funny experience, yeah? And if it, the other way around, it sounds typically much easier, because in fact, Dolby Atmos is 7.1, plus objects in 3D. And typically, those objects in the three-dimensional axis of let above, no, very often, it's, you, if it is like there or there, it does not make so much difference. But from, let's say, from a sound point of view, where we are with our 3 d it makes a difference. So let's say if you play back then uh, over an uh, Atmos content, over an Auro system, it's not like it was meant to be perhaps for Atmos, but that's much more compatible compared to the, to the other way around. So I see more and more people installing Auro 3D and keep it there. That's one reason. There's another reason for many people as well. It's so much more easy to install speakers in the corner of the ceiling than in the ceiling itself. Mm -hmm. So we have the hanging, or hanging on the wall. Only that practical solution is for many people already enough to do it. And in fact, they make, in our point of view, a good choice. But that's the market has to decide that. But you see, you find so much information already from people who have both installs done just to compare it and just read what they say. Okay, the manufacturers provide us. I know that some high-end manufacturers already are offering a solution where it maps the different speaker configurations. Is that possible? Um, yeah, but there is a slight difference where our height layer is. Let's say what they call the top layer. Yeah, that's let's say that's not the same as our top layer. So we have to be very careful not to confuse the market. But our vision is if you bring, let's say, the, 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 the vertical stereo field, if you make that angle too big, if you make it bigger like 35 degrees, it falls apart. It is, it is, then it starts to have another experience. And in fact, our vision is very clear. Immersive sound 
has not especially to do with sound coming from above and bringing that part. It is mainly about that access the ear level and let's say everything around that one. That's what our speaker layout all around us can reproduce. That's key to immersive sound. There are less sounds coming from above and there are less reflections coming from above as well. So, and we don't have an ear here to, that's all about history. Let's say that's all about related to survival. Where was the enemies coming from? How do we inform our brain? So that thing, and that's the reason why as well only with that vertical uh, stereo field and easy to install that we have more, let's say that, that effect, that effect, that, that, that illusion from a natural sound environment, yeah. Uh, up until now, one of the big problems in terms of Aura 3D has been the lack of available content for movies. Um, there, I know there was Red Tails that was released in Germany with an Aura 3D uh, soundtrack. We and were first, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we motivated the other ones, yeah. But of course, the, these companies have a legacy, long time with these movie studios, and we do well. You know, in the cinema industry, we have more than 125 movies now, international movies out. This is amazing. This is already fair. That is faster than 5.1 came on the market as well. So, um, but you have to see to bring, let's say, an, uh, a Blu-ray to the market, that's not a, such an easy thing. If you see the distribution as well, it's a very, very complex thing to handle all that stuff, yeah? Now, I've seen as well that uh, the, the, um, the Hollywood studios, they are keen to move forward, yeah? But they, they want to have, let's say, the whole thing everywhere installed, and that takes just the time. But you see, it, we are speeding up at this moment now. And typically, let's say, for the first things, it, it, really, it really requires so much more, let's say, investment from all points uh, of view, yeah? That, let's say, that we give this a little bit more time. Yeah, it is. Uh, we could be first as well in that, but it, it is such a huge investment, and I think it doesn't make sense. Uh, for us, we can never recoup that investment, and now what we are coming at this moment on the market, I think that's the right approach. Um, there was a, a Aura 3D release in the UK just towards the end of last year, which was Pixels. Yes. Um, do you uh, have plans for more releases in the UK coming forward? There will be much more releases soon. But the point is, let's say the studios make it their call. So I cannot say exactly one, but let's say that's that's now that whole process has started now. That's really good. But we have much more music. Uh, let's say music content as well on different kind of music pop music dance music all kind of stuff and I see a lot of music uh, let's say yeah uh, creators yeah but big names as well they are really busy with immersive sound they see so much more creative possibilities and they like it you mentioned um, it's not just about AVRs and processors so in what other ways can a consumer enjoy Oro 3D um, let's say we're working on mobile as well, so that's a very important thing that you can how yeah we can re, uh, let's say hear this experience just over your earbuds yeah, and we have a, a technology where you can bring this. Fat is not of course the same yeah, but you can have the same illusion of a three-dimensional, much more open sound as well over headphones. Um, you mentioned Blu-ray earlier, and there's been some big changes announced just this week in terms of Ultra HD Blu-ray, and I know that the format is agnostic as far as sound formats are concerned. Will uh, Aura 3D be involved with, or with Ultra HD Blu-ray? I think that's a big advantage of our format. We are already in all formats. I think we are the only immersive format which can go back to every format because that's due to our technology. We are fully compatible with PCM, which is part already of, of the Blu-ray players. The first Blu-ray players ha already had 5.1 PCM. So we do not have, let's say, we are not uh, dependable on, let's say, the Blu-ray players from the latest generation. People, they can play the Blu-rays from five, six, seven years ago. They all play out of. And that's the same with UHD. So we are in that PCM. That's, I think, the big power of our technology. And uh, what are the big ambitions for Aura 3D going into 2016? Oh, I think a major step is as well that we are coming now off with the first cars on the market this year. Yeah, So the first cars can be ordered, I think, from April now. That's already a big step. Yeah, There will be other big announcements, but I cannot disclose it now. I think there's big news in the next months, and you will hear more about that.